Hello there, welcome to Martin Weekly Update. My sponsor's buying a TV option. If you're an old guy like me and you're brought up with comics, rovers or tigers, you'll know there is no better story than a local boy in a local club. And that local boy goes on to score the winning goal in his debut. The story is even sweeter. And that's certainly the story of my special guest today. In the last couple of years, he's worked as a talented, cultured midfielder and, as somebody suggested to me during the week, a potential Morton captain of the And he is Rhys Lyon. Rhys, hello. All right. How are you? Very well indeed. Yourself? Good. Good, good, good. good. The hair's getting a bit long, is it not? Yeah, it's I. Me need a bold edition, look. <laughs> uh, listen, local boy, local, that is true. I mean, I used a brief spell at <coughs> Mirren, but we'll, we'll pass on that and then you spell uh, light. Um, how does it feel to be playing for your local club? Uh, it's good. Obviously, when I was at um, Academy, um, I came when I was like 14, 15, two, a year after the, the Academy actually started. So, to make it from, from 15 right up to first team um, in such a short period of time, it feels like. Um, it's, it's a great achievement for myself. Yeah, your rise has been very rapid, hasn't it? Through the uh, ranks. Has um, I was I was only I was only played reserves for two two years or two years I think two and a half years or something. So it, it was a fast because when you go from from academy football to reserves, it's a, it's a massive step. But mm -hmm. when you go from reserves to to first team, steps ten times bigger. So it's. I had to change a lot of my game in, in such a short period of time, but, but it's been it's good. It's been it's uh, um, helped me a lot. And you did score the winning goal on your debut, didn't you? I did. I hit um, Tony South. I didn't even know I was starting until 45 minutes before the game. Uh, the gaffer just read my name out, and then I was honestly I was extremely nervous. And then, um, but as soon as you get your first cut of touch of the ball, you, you feel fine again. You feel you feel good. And I, I played a couple of games. Um, the, Previous, I just never started, so so I had the feel of that a wee bit. Mm -hmm. um, one of the priorities, clearly, for David Hawking last season was to tie you down to a deal, which is one of the first things I did in August last year, was to sign you onto this two-year contract. Yeah, um, I signed I said, last, just after the Alloa game, I think it was, second game of the season, I signed, I signed three years, um, and I've got two years left now, I'm sure. Some, some yeah. Way. I've got two years, so... I'll just keep keep working hard for the next for the next two years, and then we'll just see what happens after. If I do well, I can get a new contract or, or, or whatever happens. But we'll we'll still get plenty of time. What do you feel your role in the team is? I mean, do you see yourself as a box to box midfielder, the attacker midfielder, or do you like to break up the play and put the passes through? Um, well, the guy thought like I've I've played a um, couple of games. I've played behind the behind the striker kind of. I'll be a bit more attacking this season, but um, I don't. I don't mind that. I play. I play anywhere. But I think. I think my game is try trying to get on the ball. Um, I like driving with the ball and stuff. So playing a wee bit. I like playing a wee bit deeper to get on the ball and show my 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 feet and my my faces towards their goal, so I can drive at them and make the play. And of course, you, you weighed in the few goals as well, which I'd imagine you, you want to add to. One of the really important goals I felt at a turning point in the season was away at Brother Rangers where you opened the scoring because Morton were really up against it at that point. Yeah, it was a wee, I think that was a, a period um, in the season when we were, we were struggling a wee bit. Um, we just drew one each for them at Capo. Um, so to go up the Brother, it well, certainly wasn't easy. The pitch wasn't great. Um, and they're not bad. They're a, they're a good team. They, they get on the ball and they pass it well. So to go up there and win 3 1 um, comfortably um, kind of changed the season for us, I think. Oh, I think it absolutely did change the season. As well as that, you scored the winner against a growth at Capital. That must have been a great feeling. Aye, it was good. It wasn't the greatest of goals, but every goal counts. Um, so aye, it was good to, to get the winner. Um, boys held on well after that game because it was, it was extremely early. I'm sure it was five minutes or was. something enough or whatever it was. Um, so aye, it, that was extremely good. I spoke to quite a few of the players in recent weeks, as you know, and they all talk about the frustration of the season having to come to an end, as it quite rightly had to do so. Yeah. But Morton were really on a roll. Right. Yeah, we were flying at the end. We were flying at the end. I think we started off a wee bit slow, excluding the, the, some of the cup games like Hibs, etc. But I think in the, the actual championship, we started off a wee bit slow. And then after Christmas, we stepped it, we, we right stepped it up. We beat some good teams away from home, as in Air and Queen of the South and stuff. And, uh, 
we were on a bit of a roll, we were flying a wee bit, so it was sad for the season to come, come to an end, because I'm sure we could have pushed up the table even a wee bit more, so we should have, but um, rightly so, as you said, look, it had to happen, you know what I mean? Is that a kind of natural thing that eventually a manager brings his players together, it takes a wee bit of time to evolve that, and that came to the fore in the second half of the season? Yeah, well, obviously, the gaffer come in, the gaffer's got such a different style to, to previous managers. He likes pressing high and stuff, so and getting the ball out of the field um, a wee bit faster. So, obviously, the players had to get used to that. It. it was a whole new team, basically. There was only three players, four players from last season. So, everybody had to get used to each other. We had to make, make friends with each other. Um, we had to bond. So, it was just natural that it took, took a wee bit of time, six months, to get used to it. But after Christmas, everybody clicked and we were just flying. And did you feel you had to change your game again under a new manager? Yeah, I feel, I feel as if I did. Um, I feel as if JJ liked, I feel like getting on the ball, passing, passing and stuff, like passing from the back. But the gaffer like playing, playing attacking football, exciting football, pressing high. When we get the ball, get the ball up the field as fast as we can, and run up the field. And the gaffer likes a bit of running. <laughs> um, so, so I had to change my game a wee bit. Aye, but, but it's been good. It's been good. It's helped me a lot. I tell you, I watched the gaffer play, and that's a man that never liked running. No, <laughs> just like you, I was Having said that, I did score a fantastic goal at Wembley that was worth about 90 million quid. Aye, shut up. He doesn't need to run then. <laughs> I bet he talks about that all the time. No, he always talks about his goal he scored for uh, Crystal Palace, the top corner. I don't know if that's the one you're talking about. That's the one, yeah, the one at Wembley. Yeah, that one, aye. That's the one, aye. <laughs> Listen, he was a local boy as well, playing at the local club. And you're the local boy playing at the local club. Um, does that have advantages and disadvantages, you know, staying around the town? Because, you know, you, you've recently bought a property in Unix, so yeah. you're very much part of the local scene. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good as in some boys need to travel a lot and stuff. It's for five, six minutes up the road for me. So, so it's good in that sense. It's, I, wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't even say it's got any negatives at all. Because I can still, I'm still staying with my family. I'm still a young boy, so I'm still staying with my family. I said, get up in the morning, travel five minutes up the road, and then travel five minutes home. So it's all positives, I think. Yeah, but socially, when you're out and about, as you would, 20 years of age, you'll be you know, enjoying life as you should in the clubs and things. Do you get hassle from people, or do you feel like saying, I want to talk to you about the game? Or? Uh, now, now and again, not, not a lot, not as, not as much as you probably think. Um, when I'm out and about in Tesco, people just would say, all right, talk to me, I'm at the pitch. Sometimes, obviously, they're out and people just come and talk to me, asking me when we're, when we're going back and stuff. But it's, it's not no hassle, it's just normal conversation. How have you coped with the lockdown? Um, it's, it's been all right. It's, it's been boring, but um, it's been all right getting to spend time with my, my, my family and stuff. I've just got a new, a new born little sister, so it's been good to get spend some time with her. And um, then I've just been out running. I'm, the road run, the... Run, uh, road runs are getting extremely boring but um, I've been trying to mix it up with going to the pitch and stuff um, but it's not easy when you're yourself Yeah, I was going to say you get your chance to work on your ball skills, no? Uh, a wee bit I've been just there's a wee grass pitch just over from me now um, it's got a, a wall and that so I've been doing, just trying to do stuff there passing with the wall and stuff but, but no, no, not much no, I'll probably be a wee bit rusty when we get back I didn't realise you were a Brazilian I mean, I take it you work on your free kicks and stuff I three kicks and penalties is my, my fourth day with a stop on in my time. <laughs> Listen, uh, I, pre- I take it you've been watching the, the football behind closed doors. What do you think of that? Um, it's, it's, it's all right. They've, they've put fan noises and stuff in. So, uh, so, um, so I don't know. It's, it's all right. It's football back. It's from, for fans anyway, for me and stuff, it's, it's good to get to get something to watch again. Football, but for, for players, I don't know. It's, some, I think it would be positive for some people, negative for some people. Some people who maybe get a wee bit nervous when there's so many fans there, they might kind of express themselves a wee bit more because it's just like a training game, isn't it? So it could be positive and negative for some people. Yeah, because I've been watching it as well and I'm stuck with the fact that there are some players who just don't seem motivated by it. Uh, some, people, some people could work off the fans, like the, the atmosphere and stuff, it can drive them on, so... As I said, it could be positive and negative for some people who might be nervous and now's their time to just go and express themselves, go do what they want. Because some fans really got on your back um, in big games like that. So, so for some people, they could just go express themselves. But for some people, fans, like, 
when a tackle happens or, or a goal happens and the fans really do lift, it gives you a lift as well. So it just could work either way. Hey, I was talking to one of your friends during the week and he said to me that you were a big Reds man and that I should congratulate you on Liverpool winning the title. I understand that's not the case. <laughs> that's absolutely not the case, no. I'm not, I'm not I'm a massive Red fan, but my English team is Man United, so I would rather see Man United win the league than Liverpool. <laughs> but, but Liverpool were, were ridiculous this season, so they were. They really were, and the likes of Andrew Robertson, a young Scots guy in there, mm. doing the business. Does that encourage guys like you for your career? It does, I because he... he his his career's also went extremely fast. He he was on like Queens Queens Park a couple of years ago, and then he's just mm-hmm. built in Hill City, and now, now he's just won a Premier League and a Champions League with, with Liverpool. So everything in football can happen so quick because it's such a short career. It is. I mean, let's look to the future then. Uh, the immediate future is Morton and the new season. What was your ambitions for yourself, and what do you think the club's still looking to do? Um, for myself, I feel as if I. Well, well, I was a lovely player. I watched to play as many games as possible, get as many games under my belt as possible, as many minutes. Um, try and chip in with a few more assists and goals. Um, and then for the club, I feel as if the last two seasons, we've just finished the playoffs. So I feel as if this season we can try and really push on to get playoffs. And of course, there'll be a lot of competition because pending court cases, etc. But I mean, Hearts at Tynecastle will be a good game to go to. That'd be a great game. I was just talking to my to my dad about that the other day. Um, can I just clicked into my head the other day that we'll be playing at Tyne Castle? Obviously, we played at Easter Road, um, but um, Tyne, I've been told Tyne Castle is right in beside the pitch. All the fans are right in beside the pitch and stuff. So, so that'd be a great atmosphere if the fans are allowed to come. Yeah, you do see a lot of footballers in this country, particularly guys that come into the country from outside. Talking about Tyne Castle has been their favourite away ground, uh, even yeah. if they're playing for a big club against Hearts. Uh, it's because the fans are so they're so passionate about it and they're so close to the pitch, so so it feels as if they're on it with you. So uh, it'll be a good, it'll be a good experience. Excellent. So just as I say, looking ahead, then you know somebody suggested to me during the week, this guy's a future Morton captain. You're 20 years of age. You've got it all in front of you. Would that be an ambition for you? It would, I. It would. Um, I've been I've been here since I was a, a young boy, as I said. So. No, the gaffers gave me the gaffers gave me captain on two different occasions. Obviously not at the start of the game, but against Air when Jim went off, and against Dundee on the TV when Jim went off as well. So, I it's, it's an ambition of mine to, to be captain to give to be given that role. Um, obviously not. I, I feel as if I'm a wee bit too young than the now, but when I've got a bit more experience and I know a bit more about the dressing room and stuff, that would be a, a great honour for me. Yeah. I mean, guys like Jim McAllister. And, and Mitch Miller, example for do they take you under the wing and, and take you through things like that and talk to you about being in the club? Um, not really, been, not really the, the captain, but they take me under the wing, um, just as in the football sense. I talk to um, Mitch Miller um, on a regular basis, um, just about anything. So I, they take, they take, they both take me under the wing as in training, but not so much the captaincy um, just now. Spoke to Calvin Orsi last week. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, he was described to me as one of the most mental characters oh. in the Morton. <laughs> With the English man. <laughs> <laughs> he, wouldn't, he wouldn't tell us some of the stuff that goes on. I mean, it's it's some dressing room, is it not? It's, 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 it's a great dressing room. It's probably the, I've not been involved in many, but first team wise, it's probably been the best. Um, Calvin, honestly, from from as soon as he comes in at nine in the morning till we leave at three, two, whatever it is, he's he's on a high. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> He's, a, again, another one of those guys that at one point in his life saw the dark side and was up at St. Mary. Aye, so is I. <laughs> Reese, listen, thanks for joining us here. I, I can't leave without saying that is the biggest mirror I've ever seen in my life. Oh, it's, 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 it's one of them ones where you're supposed to stand up. <laughs> but we've just put it sideways. <laughs> Who put it on the wall? My dad. <laughs> Oh, it's huge. It's huge. <laughs> However, it will get that barn out of yours in. It will, man. <laughs> Reese, listen, it's been great to talk to you. I look forward to Cheers. seeing you in the Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining us on the Good Morton Weekly Update. I mean, tears the options. <laughs>